right now. On on stream Facebook. Two. It's stream two four seven live. Is that the only place it's at? Yes, sir. You wanna watch us? Come to stream two four seven live dot com. Oh crap. Never threw the logo on the TV. Mm mm. It's alright. So then we should turn it off. Yeah. The throwing things is dangerous. <coughs> yeah, boy. How would we? You checking it? Check. You might check checking out my melody. <laughs> I see watch bit B fourteen. All right, hang on. Bone number fourteen post fight show. That's the one. But it doesn't say live. Okay, I'm on. You see you? It's I live. See me? All right, we're live. It's working. Danny Palm on the keys, with the cuts, the cut master flex. <laughs> <laughs> it took my words. It took my sounds. It's in the dictionary. What does b -b 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 mean? It Daniel means Manual. Daniel's have you have you read Daniel's manual? You should read Daniel's <laughs> manual. It's a good book. So I hope you guys enjoyed our very professional intro there. As you can tell, new system, new streaming, new podcast studio. We're still getting comfortable with the mechanics of everything. <laughs> I can I can Is hear the replay. The, yeah. yeah. So, but we are live. We we confirmed the live stream seems to be working and well. So thanks for joining us for the Brawl in the Berg 14 post fight show. We had some good fights last night, gentlemen. We had a great night of fights. I I, I was very happy with, uh, you know, it was a great night. Hello, people. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Nice. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. So, guys, <clears throat> you know, we had. Uh, I mean. I think the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the moment of the night was after it all ended. Right. Right. Yep. And Definitely. Kind of, uh, unbeknownst to anybody, comma worthy got a big decision win, hard fought fight. He was beat up. I mean, we, he could barely walk <laughs> later on. Um, if that's what you call walking, <laughs> nice <laughs> hobbling around. Yeah. Um, but he made the big announcement that he was, you know, he left his gloves in the center of the cage, and uh, that's going to be a MMA career wrap for Kama. Pretty bittersweet moment. Yeah, another one of the Pittsburgh legends hanging him up, man. That whole old guard is pretty much done at this point i think ethan goss texted you joking like i guess i'm the only og left and it's kind of right you know yeah there's it's dempsey a... mazada cherico milstead they're all all retired now comma joins them that was i'll let you guys talk more about it because i know you guys have been working with comma a lot longer than me but i'll just say that that like the fact that that happened in our cage was such an honor like that was pretty amazing to let it be comma's last fight for us and a great fight a win and on his terms that's the best you always hear people in combat sports talk about when people stick around too long and they fall off the map and it just gets sad at the end like commandant didn't have that moment he got to go out <laughs> he got to go out on top nice that was live audio actually from the hollywood casino at the meadows last yes, night yes. when he retired but yeah it was just such an honor and i know how much comma means to 247 so i'll let you and jim talk more about that because yeah he i remember when we first started doing this um i i knew uh the name comma um <clears throat> but i never really got to see him in action i remember the first time that i saw him fight i was um i don't know i i didn't expect to see the level of talent that i did um and so, like, for me, that was the beginning of, like, okay, there's UFC talent. There's real UFC talent here in Pittsburgh. And it was just something that I always thought, well, like, that's elsewhere. You know, you you don't have that around here. Does Pittsburgh really have that kind of community? And it's obvious, you know, with going down the, the list, you know, um, Goss being the last of the OGs and the guys that we mentioned, that um, that's – if if you want to get to the next level 
that's that's what it looks like right there. And to go with his talent, the personality, the type of person that he is, he's he's every bit as good on the personal side as he is on the skill side inside the cage. Yeah, I think there are a lot of people that, um, you know, the gyms in Pittsburgh are pretty unique in, in that, like, you don't have to, like, you don't just cheer for your gym. They're all, like, one. And, like, the Matt Factory guys that were sitting in the second row, like, were constantly cheering on, comma, and, and you know, coaching and screaming and, and all of those things. And and so that's pretty unique. And I, th- I think it was, uh, it was a surreal moment, like, because it was so unexpected. Um, I'm... I'm really happy that it, it happens like this because, you know, it's no secret. Like, Kama's suffered, uh, you know, when he lost, he's been knocked out. Like, he's, 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 he's got hit in the head quite a few times where it caused him to lose consciousness, have a concussion. And I know against Trevor Peak, with his most recent loss just a couple months ago, um, he was said that he was dazed but he didn't go unconscious he didn't lose like he was he was actively like trying to defend himself and and they called the fight and he wasn't happy about that but ultimately like i don't want to see comma get to a point where you know he's he's getting knocked out you know and 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 that like was a worry of mine. I mean, I, I, I like him too much. I'm too good of friends with him for that not to be something that I think about. And so like, I'm happy it have it's happening on his terms. It goes out on a win. Like, you know, going into battle and, and getting to the point of battle um, to fight in that cage at that level and fighting opponents he's fighting and like getting there, like, it, that takes a wear and tear. He's been doing it a long time. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. He has now 29, I think, pro fights. He's going to retire at 19 and 10. I don't know if I'm correct. It's around 30, though. Let's just say 30 pro fights. Fought Paul Felder along the way. Fought, just go look at Kama's and, record. and I mean, So just insane. think about that. He's fighting guys at that level, that Paul Felder, like... There's other guys without looking. I, I Billy Quarantillo, maybe. And, uh, yeah, there are other UFC guys for sure. And and to fight guys out of the UFC that yeah. level for so long, it's I insane. Mean, it, it is. It is. Then the training that goes along with it. I mean, that's the thing that everybody, every fighter talks about. You know, the real fight is the camp. And yep. then So you've gone through thirty pro fight camps plus a handful of amateur camps plus running a gym plus being a fan like. The wear and tear on Kama is real, so to see him go out like that is awesome. And I just want to also shout out Josh Roller for being the perfect dance partner for that moment. We didn't know that was Kama's retirement fight at all, but I'm glad now in retrospect that it was that Roller got to be the dance partner for I mean, that one because he was game. Well, not only on, on on the fight level was he game, but also on the sportsmanship oh, and the camaraderie and like the he was respect. Um, those two show those two are very similar and like they're just so likable they're just great guys that are like they're guys that people want to be around yes and, and things like that and so to see those two share those moments in the cage and like the respect that they showed each other like you know sometimes when guys are in the cage and like i i think Kama said it said it to us afterwards he said like I made the decision that this was my last MMA fight in, like in the backstage, right? Wow. He knew going in. So mm. he when he by the time he hit the cage, he's like, I'm having fun. Like I this is gonna be fun. Nice. And so all of those if you haven't seen it yet, I would suggest like this is one you wanna see. Um it's it, objectively a great fight, retirement and comma aside. If you had no idea who these two guys were and weren't interested, it's it's a great fight anyway. C- Kama's Kama's right jab was ridiculous oh, on yeah. point. Yeah. He yeah. he had to have snapped his head back with that jab maybe six or seven. Like he hit him more than that with the jab, but I think he, he snapped his head like six or seven times during the yeah. fight. Um I don't think there were any um explosive um like jump on someone, I'm about to finish someone moments. Um, it was a chess match. Um, 
there were takedowns, there were, you know, exchanges, there were, you know, it, it had everything. Roller was a wild man, yeah. Yeah, there was one exchange though in the uh, in the second round uh, for Roller where it it could have gotten a little dicey, and he backed up calm against the cage. Yeah, I think. Uh, yep. <clears throat> but that was. Uh, like if you could write a script um, for the ending to a career, that's the type of fight that you would have in there where it was back and forth. It came down to the judges. And in the end, you can't say the good guy came out on top because they're both good guys. But that career of constantly fighting and battling through adversity and and getting to the top. And in the end, he came out on top. Yeah, yeah, and a storybook ending, and it was that split decision that mm-hmm. you know was somewhat controversial. I, I, Kama's corner really felt like it was outlandish. I, I, I personally was not surprised that there was a judge that gave the fight to Roller. Um, I thought there were two rounds that could have gone either way. Mm-hmm. I think collectively, I I think it could have also been 30-27, but, but the second and third rounds I thought were close enough that you could make a case. I agree completely. I, I Before they read the scorecards, I was just thinking to myself, like, I genuinely don't know who just won. Like, yeah. first round comma, second round roller, and to me it came down to the third, and that it was super back and forth. So... I, yeah, like you said, Kama's corner was really mad. I obviously have to rewatch it. It's tough just watching a fight once and and scoring it. So that the judges have a hard job for sure. But I would have to rewatch to really decide. It didn't seem like a robbery or anything like that to me on any yeah. level. That yeah, seemed I mean, like perfect scorecards actually. Yeah, I, I, I was a little, um, I was a little surprised it was split, but not like to the point where I was like, what. <laughs> Yeah, Roller had a moment, I think it was the third round, where he was starting to tag Kama a little bit on the feet, and he pulled guard. And Kama yeah. ended up securing top position for a few minutes. Like, that very well could have won Kama the fight, that decision to pull guard. It was wild to me that he did it then, and he was even joking with me after Roller was like, I'm an idiot. Like, why did I pull guard right there? Was that um, when when he was, they were both on their feet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it he looked, did that twice. He, I think he, he tried did it that twice. Yeah. Round, too. Yeah, he tried it twice. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Roller was just... He, he was very good. He was exactly what we thought. Like we said, the wrestling was very good. His strikes so and game. So scrappy. That wow. one take, that one shot was like lightning. Was lightning. Yeah. Dude. I think that was at the very beginning of the second round or third. Yeah. yeah it's go. almost like a passing of the torch with that fight because they're, they're pretty close in age, but when it comes to the amount of time in the cage, I think Kama's is probably double with his amateur career, yeah. his pro career. And Josh is he's hitting his stride. Um, and you know, he's a talent that is easily noticeable. And um, if he continues on this path, you know, he could potentially get to the next level. So, you know, he just had to get through a guy that had been there and Kama said, you know, I, I still got something left in this, yeah. I mean, I I think I think Josh, this was a fight he needed. Um to get that next, that next look, um, he showed he belonged. Yeah, I, 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 but ultimately, like, when you when you get that L, like that sets you back. And I think that um, the talent's there. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I just think he's he's got to reel off a couple. He's got to get super motivated. He's got to let this spark him. Mm-hmm. Because if if you say, well, this set me back, and like that can do the opposite effect too, knowing that like you just had a loss, like that you need a couple wins now, as opposed to you were right on the cusp, that can be a demotivator. So I, I, I just think he has the talent, he has the skill, he has like, can he find it within at, at 34 years old? Is that what he is? Yeah. At, at 34, so. can he find the motivation to like get back on that on that cart because mm-hmm. he, he's he's a great guy super Such cool a good dude. dude yeah loved working with him and his team they were awesome all the way around yeah we had more fights on the card guys i think we did if you want to so, talk about them okay <laughs> i i i want to talk about <laughs> I, we had our first elbow knockout yeah wow 
I mean, what? Disgusting. Tom Kaiser. So I don't know. Maybe it happened maybe three minutes into the fight. There was a lot of back and forth, a lot of like, you know, standing in the clinch, get, backing each other up on the cage, underhooks, like, yeah, some exchange at the, earlier on. But they were there was a lot of clinch action there, and man, he he just from the clinch just with an elbow knockout that was not. I mean, it looked it was incredible. Yeah, I my first thought was. I was so upset that the Josh Pereira fight didn't happen because Matt Brown would have been there for Pereira and like Matt Brown needed to see that elbow. That's such a Matt Brown elbow. Like that was Matt Brown versus Diego <laughs> Sanchez. I was like, oh man, Matt Brown would have loved that if he saw that. So Kaiser, yeah, he just separated from the clinch, got space, crushing elbow, just flattened Damone Hawkins. So that it was a great fight. And my, the, my favorite part of that was afterwards at Bacon, Bourbon, and Beer for the after party. Kaiser and Hawkins sharing a laugh, talking they to each other. They were boys. They were spent like a I long freaking love time that, together. Man. Yeah, yeah. Now they fought twice, once at amateur, once at pro. Still, you know, sharing some food, laughs and talks together. I love the sportsmanship between those two is awesome to see, man. That was, that was a really cool moment, too. That's the uh, really cool thing about, like, MMA. Most of the time, mm -hmm. even if there's beef, like, you, you spend time fighting someone, like, that kills the that squashes the beef most of the time. Like yep. you get it out, it's over, you move on. Yep. Most of the time. Well, I remember when uh, when you and I were doing a podcast, and we had Mike Wilkins on, and uh, you know he said, I, I forget what how the the questioning um, got to this where he um, threw back this answer, but it was, you know, what's that like for you and the opponent? What's it? Uh, how does it? go down afterwards and he said with every fight after it was over he became a fan of the guy that he fought because if that guy goes on to win the next bout or you know have a decent go career afterwards run. it's you know makes him look better his career because he got the w so to to have animosity against your opponent didn't make sense you wanted the best for them because of either what you did against them or you know it was it was it just made sense to not come in with um ill will right and leave the same way yeah so i think that makes perfect I, yeah. sense uh, we see that a lot obviously we get to see it a lot behind the scenes and everything um i would say <laughs> kaiser's pro debut for sure is a fight that stood out to me as just a dominant performance like now I'm extremely interested in where he goes from here, right? Like when you make your pro debut like that and it's that dominant, you say, okay, well, now how good is this guy? Like where, and, you know? And it's interesting for him because he's always been jumping around to different promotions, so he doesn't really have a home promotion. And we're, we're not necessarily a home promotion for him. Like we're, we have shows that are anywhere from, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half away from him. So yeah. that, there's kind of a weird thing for him, like that. You know, he has such a high talent level. He can start building up this base, but he doesn't really have, like, the hometown right. fights available. Right. So who knows? Uh, uh, maybe he fights for us again. Maybe he fights elsewhere. Like, he's probably, like, you know, gonna. he's probably going to have a hard I – mean, I think he's going to have a hard time finding fights. I got an I, I got – I'm going to throw it out there. This is literally just me playing fantasy matchmaker. I already thought of the fight that I want to see for him next, December 17th. Trenton Zadarko mm. and Tom Kaiser. Mm. It's a great matchup. Yeah. Two that's... great grapplers with good stand up. Zadarko, a little more experienced. A great test for Kaiser. Step up. Yeah, I I, I think that Ka that's an interesting match. It's a fun fight. Bout. I think it's good. I think it's good for both guys. Zadarko been out for a little while, so he needs to get back in there and, and get a nice little test. Kaiser's definitely that test. They're they're both they're both um you know, super, super successful amateur careers. And yeah, there's one's now three and one as a pro. The other one's one and oh, like, yeah, that, that, hey, that sounds, uh, sounds about right. Nice. I'm making notes right now. I can, <laughs> I can see that fight happening. Same. I like it. I think, uh, actually, Hey, this is the behind the scenes podcast, yeah. right? Yeah, we, we tried to make that fight already, and Kaiser didn't want somebody of Zadarko's experience for his first pro fight, which that's 
makes perfect sense. Like sure. he says, his arc goes three and that's one. That's a perfect second fight. Yeah, but now I, th- <laughs> I think now after that he's gonna be like, maybe I am ready for that. So yeah, that that's a fun one. But Kaiser's elbow, obviously being a highlight of the show. The other guy who just completely blew me away was sheer talent. The fight right before him, Miguel Francisco. Yeah, M- Miguel. That, uh, he's he a had, savage. He had an awesome crowd there for him. Um, and, you know, it was a really cool moment with um, honoring his mother, um, who, who, who had passed in 2018 uh, to breast cancer. And um, with it being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we had a, a little, um, you know, a shirt that we were donating proceeds of, of the sales to um, in, in his mother's name. So it was a, it was a cool um thing and uh, you know we we announced that you know a fight or two before uh, right before intermission and then he fought after intermission and so it was just a it, it was kind of a special uh a special moment for him to say my 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 mother was my inspiration and then go in there and look so phenomenal and just um take care of business I didn't get to see the finish. The only thing I saw, because I had uh, a camera guy like in direct line between me and what was going on, I could see Austin pulling back, and I knew that um, that he was caught. I didn't know that his arm, his left arm, was was caught. But I could see him coming over top with the right, where he was trying to fight his way out of it that way. And um, And then, like, seconds later, he stood up, and he's holding his left arm and you know i knew it was over then but i I talked to luke afterwards and he said it was a super high level move um especially at amateur level and we knew that about about miguel going in that he had this talent we just never saw it in the 247 cage yeah and 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 you know miguel was a kid who always kind of had that like right around 500 record or maybe like a one and two or two and two or like, you know, so it's hard to judge just based on a record, the talent level that someone has to me, he could very well, like his talent level, he could be a guy that's like four and oh, or five and oh, like he's good. He's r- really solid. Um, was super impressed with, I was super impressed with his performance <laughs> and, um, was that was that really bad? Or? It was bad, yeah. But yeah. I I gave you the courtesy chuckle. Oh, okay, good. Well, that was nice. The cur- oh, you back? You back from? What the do you mean? I never party? left. I tried to time it with the camera cuts to where nobody would notice. Oh. I like waited till you started talking so the camera would be on you. Then Wait, I- well, when did he? You know, I tr- <laughs> you know, I tried to like talk for. A, an I extra I long thought time. you did, yeah. I appreciated that. But we but I had just to, to just to call you out on, on <laughs> yeah, jumping thanks. up. So yeah, I did all this work to make sure <laughs> nobody could tell. And then Ryan's like, Hey, why'd you leave? <laughs> friends. If, with friends like these, who needs enemies? That's right? right. That's right. So um we were talking about Miguel and what a great performance. Um just kind of refreshing my memory with the finish. I Going off of just memory alone, I felt like he had the triangle in, was going for that initially. The arm was caught, and then he transitioned to the arm. That's exactly That's what, what Luke happened. was referring to, yeah. Yep. It's exactly what happened. I was talking to Austin, again, at Bacon, Bourbon, and Beer afterwards, and he he was saying that he's been working on his ground game like crazy. He's like, this whole camp, basically, all I did was grappling because I knew that was my weakness. After fighting Edwin, he's like, I realized that was definitely my weakness. So he started training his ground game a lot. He's like, I was so proud of myself because I was trapped in the triangle and I was doing the proper defense. He's like, I knew what to do. And the second I started to escape, he switched to the arm bar. Like, like he's like, he, he played me perfectly and he, yeah. he had all respect. He's like, that was just beautiful on his part. Like, yeah. You know what? A uh, uh, little irony there is um, Austin had said he stopped training boxing and, um, and Miguel just had a couple boxing matches. Like he's still <laughs> right. Yeah, he he gets involved in the amateur boxing too. So there's a guy that was like heavy boxing, you know, and like you know favored his own um, skills with striking coming into this, but knew that he needed to um, 
get better, you know, with the ground game and the jujitsu and the defense. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately where it went to. Nice. You know, where he stopped focusing on boxing, went to jujitsu to shore that up. But it still just wasn't enough. Yeah. What, what, what other, um, what other fights, um, did you guys like cut your eye the most? Let's, we'll definitely talk about everybody a little bit, but let's, let's give our fights of the night like we did last time. Let's skip to okay. what you consider the fight of the night. I mean, I, I think there's two, uh, in my opinion, um, that are really close. But ultimately, we like, probably all have the same two uh, uh, on that level. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately, the, the, the one that I feel just the way everything played out was Colin and Josh. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, with the retire, like with all of the things said, it was the main event. It was super high level. They went 15 minutes. Like there was ba- like it, that fight had everything yeah. in it. Yep. Um, the other one is obviously. Clayton Hoot Lee. Who? Um, that fight was. So, I think the fight was very good. And I think it really, really helps when you have like a massive crowd there yeah. for you. Yeah. And Both of those guys sold well and had crowds, so it was extra crazy. Yeah, yeah. That environment for that fight, for an amateur debut fight, was. <laughs> in like it was awesome i mean you don't get that very often especially for a debut so that environment that crowd that energy there was so i mean it was rocking in there and and that set kind of that was a fight that was fairly or fairly early in the card Mm -hmm. and it just kind of set the tone for the rest Mm -hmm. of the night like it just gave an energy to the room that like is yeah i mean that that venue, that energy in there is is awesome. is awesome. Yeah, you you touched on that, which is great. That's exactly what I wanted to say. It was like the first three fights of the card were good. Like you said, the energy in that place was great the whole time. It had a great crowd, great show. But fourth fight of the night, Clayton versus Dan Walter. Like there was a noticeable it's on now. And then it carried throughout the entire rest of the card. Like they literally set the tone. For the rest of the card. And I think with one fight of experience between them, that was a super high level fight. They did not look like a debut and a one and out. Like both of those guys are extremely talented. I know Dan was really beating himself up for losing, but I told him, I was like, I think when you rewatch the fight, you're gonna be surprised at how well you did. Like he had Hootley hurt several times, had a super, super sexy sweep in round one. You remember that? You yeah. remember how sexy that sweep was, Ryan? Don't make that face. I mean, Don't make that face. Yeah, what a fantastic sweep! What a nice, ju- what a well, s- the technique was all. It was sexy. Sexy, like, yeah. dude, what's wrong with you? Just gave me a yeah. I mean, it was. I know, I know what's wrong. With you. <laughs> There's a lot wrong with me. I, I, no, okay, oh, dude, let's, let's rephrase that Come question. <laughs> what things are there not wrong with you? <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, the, you're, the company you are around is number one. That's yeah. the only thing I can think of that is not wrong. Not with wrong you. with me. Like, Even Danny Palm. Well, I I meant like your spouse. Mm. Like that's okay. like you're good to go there. That's fair. And but like the, your coworkers are trash. <laughs> I totally agree with that. Yeah, strong and endor- what? What's Danny Palm doing? What's Danny Palm doing? Hello, what, what? people. I'm not trash. Yeah, 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 you're not trash, but, Danny. Uh, weren't we waiting for the beep, 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 Hello, beep. Beep. That's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, people. I love I love that Danny Palm is like low key offended at your impression of him. When yeah, you did. I, he's I, like, What do you why do you always make me sound like a creep? Hello, people. <laughs> it's pretty creepy. It's more like fair. Hello people. Ooh. Oh, that's different. I don't like it. I don't like <laughs> no. it. I'm much like Dude, you can like we're gonna have to mute your mic if you're gonna do that again <laughs> because it's really hello, people. No. That's that's what it has to be. Nice, called him out with the crickets. Crickets. All right, all right. Back back to that sexy sweep. I mean, back to the fights. Dan Walters and who? No, for real. That we are not overstating how good that fight was. The place was freaking rocking like crazy. Hoot Lee right after the fight was actually disappointed with his performance as well. So that's like. 
the additional layer that I love about that fight was as good as we think it was, both fighters actually left that thinking more about their mistakes and how they're going to get better than being like, oh, I'm so happy I just had an awesome fight. Yeah. Um, Dan w- was obviously, I don't know if distraught's uh, the right word. I know um, describing certain aspects of fights, I would never use the word sexy. So I'll just say Dan was distraught. I'll go with that. Um, and his coach came like sh- like right after uh, the fight was over. His coach came shooting straight over to him and grabbed him and hustled him back to the other side to like get him out of the doldrums of him being depressed. Because I think he realized that that probably didn't go his way and he didn't want him focusing on that and thinking... Like, you know, I I got so much to work on. Your amateur, what you just went through was, for us, fight of the night, um, not just with the skills, but with how the crowd was involved. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. That's two shows in a row for us there where that atmosphere was... Well, and those that crowd yeah. was going back and forth. Like, you, like, yeah, that was like awesome. Like, you could tell, like... There were a bunch of people there for both fighters, and yeah. then one one side was cheering like the, it was like upsetting the yep. other side. Yep. So like as soon as like it was back and forth, it was it was it was freaking amazing. It yeah. was cool. I that, love young that. guys like, too. That's the type of thing that you don't get at the UFC level. Like the crowd of the UFC show is not like this intimate. Um, right. There's not. It it just. You can't. It's. It could be a fun crowd. It could be like exciting. But there's a difference. Absolutely. And, and that was a good example of that back and forth. Like, hey, I, like we're here for the opponent. Like it. It was cool. It turns every fight into like Steelers Ravens. Like everything's a rivalry because you're intensely invested. That's that's not. You're not a fan of this fighter. You're his brother. You're his mother. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so much more intense than just being like, ah. Oh, I like to watch John Jones fight, so I'm going to go to the UFC card. No, totally different dynamics. So that's really cool. One thing that I will transition to, Jim, gold star, my friend, because we had two amateurs on this card, Lucas Siebert and Tony Welsh, who dominated their opposition in their first fight, just complete domination. They needed a step up in competition. Both of those guys got the perfect test and step up in competition and did not just blow through their opponents got a lot of cage time both won decisions like that's perfect matchmaking when you when you get amateur prospects like that that need to be gradually built up can't throw them to the wolves but also can't give them cupcakes where they're not learning anything Mm -hmm. those are perfect fights man you know so ryan you mentioned it um just a little bit ago talking about miguel and his record in two and two and that's one of the things that is a lot of times when you when we start the matching, matchmaking process, and we're looking at guys to potentially bring in for the uh, for the red corner. Um, you look at a record, and it, it doesn't always indicate it doesn't tell the somebody's story. skill level because exactly. we've mentioned Aaron Harper before. Yeah, you know he started He's- out as zero and three, easily the best zero and three. In PA. Mm-hmm. No, there's another one. Oh, yeah, Craig Perry. Well, now. yeah, there's Craig that. Now yeah. There is, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you just, you can't look at the record and say, this guy's a chump. We're, you know, we're bringing in uh, a stepping stone because Theo Savitt is a very, very talented one and two, now one and three. He's. Yeah, it, it, skilled, skilled. He's got super skilled like, cage presence, yep. fight IQ, knows when to slow the fight down. Okay, uh, question for you guys: Was there anything? Um, was there anything in the uh, Lucas Siebert fight that you guys said like, "Oh, like this person should do this," or like, because there's something that really stuck out to me that I thought like. Man, why is this person not doing this? Does anything stick out to you guys? Like, did anything <laughs> like happen during that fight that you remember? Not particularly, to be totally honest with you. But it sounds like you two know what. Oh, what you I don't say. know that he knows. We haven't talked about that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Well, I, we got, on the I count thought, of three. So. I thought Lucas Siebert could have like gone to the body like a ton and done damage, but he was he he never punched to the body. He was always punching to the head. Mm-hmm. And I thought the body shots would have been if he would have went to the body, it would have been devastating. Interesting, I mean, the, yeah. Because he was always up. He was mm. always the guard was always high, and I just felt like he he could have gone low and like tore him up. And then and then then that opens up the exactly. But I don't I don't remember him going to the body at all, and I just felt like, man, if he if he goes to the body, it could be the, nice. He was doing such a great job of like. Dude, the, the the monkey roll like that was so mm-hmm. good. That was so good. <laughs> it was so good. I mean, that like in wrestling, like wrestlers know how to hang on to that. Like in yep. in, in but like if you're an MMA guy and you aren't like wrestling all the time, like you have no chance. Yeah, yeah. like so. I mean, he looks like. He's having fun in there, and that there's something special about just mm-hmm. his, you know, his demeanor in the cage, and just the way he the way he goes about it. I yeah. I, I, I I get excited about Lucas. Same. I said it before the fight too, in terms of the eye test, like that he just passes the eye test in a very obvious way. You just watch him fight; he's insanely comfortable. Like you said, everywhere the fight goes, super good. I mean, he's polished, and that, like I said, all credit to Jim. Like that was. The step up he needed. Like I definitely think the next fight for Lucas Siebert is going. He's going to look way better than that. Well, so I again just going off of memory, didn't take any notes or anything like that. But I felt like the first fifteen or twenty seconds of the fight came off in like a, a, a quick scramble that he wasn't getting the best of, and he was like chat like yes, yeah, Savage. He was getting him hit. early. Yeah, yeah, he was. He just kind of came out firing, and it yeah. looked like you know. It looked like it could be a long night for mm-hmm. him, but he quickly took control and got over that. Like that's the thing. Most guys that are at this one, two fights, the amateur career, most guys that are at that level just show they up. aren't calm enough yeah. to like just okay, slow things down. Like that's what he needed to do and he did. Yeah. He has the demeanor of a way, 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 way more experienced guy. Most sure. guys that are in his like experience level. That turns into a firefight. Yep. And one, and like it's just gonna be a knockout. One of these, but he's like, okay, let me no, get no, through no. this. Let's. Just, We're and good. Then we'll work. We're good. Yeah. yeah. What did you think was uh, when Ryan said like the same? Oh, oh, the same, body yeah. shots. Nice. Yeah, yeah, the thing that I noticed um, is probably like in the second round is Siebert. He's got a long reach, and I was thinking to myself. There's more to just a jab and staying at your distance to keep your opponent away. He's got a long reach, and why doesn't he set that up for the body shots? Mm-hmm. And so, like, talk, like l- looking uh, at him. The thing is, some guys stand, like, kind of low. So He was very high with yeah. it, and, and it, and he was just going, and it just seemed like, dude, go body, body, head, like, Especially with that's a ground thing, but like yeah, right, it right, opens right. you up. Like especially with the rule set, you know, you can't head kick. There's there are you can't knee to the head. Like the body is emphasized a little more in novice amateur, I think, because the body's always open. Yeah, like well, and and, and legal. He, I mean, he, <laughs> the stuff coaches are far better than I. Am. <laughs> sure. I'm just saying, like that's what I thought. Sure, and and like. I mean, you have Mike Wilkins and Will like yeah, yeah. in your corner. Like, you're, probably listen to you're them. You're in the right hand. <laughs> yeah, probably listen to them. Maybe I saw something. Maybe like I th- just thought I saw something, but like that—that's something I was like, wow. I, mm-hmm. I'm surprised he's not like ter- like right because it seemed like after a while, Siebert had him where he wanted him on the feet, and like it, he he totally turned things around, and you know he was yep. high with the garden. That, mm. On that note, it's important to point out that Lucas has only been at Stout for a very short period of time right now, and that's who is cornering him. So even though he's been training for a while, mostly immortal, like he still, he told me after the fight, he's like, I'm still getting used to the new coaches and everything too. Like once I have more time, like my next fight, going to be feeling way better, way more comfortable with them too. Well, I think it was kind of, um, every time I saw like Will coming into the cage between, I don't know if you guys noticed this, uh, but but w- the look on Will's face, mm-hmm. did you see it? Yes. He was like, 
so he was pleased. having fun yes. watching he was That's awesome. so pleased his with pupil, like, yeah. the, the way <laughs> things were going and the way he turned things around and like it didn't look good in that initial onslaught and like the way he just took control and like it just like it was like a proud like it, he looked like super stoked like dude the, mm -hmm. those two like how cool is it just as a, a, an absolute aside like mike and will danilo david Sachs, like the people that we have our local gym like isaac obviously didn't have any fighters on this card which is so rare and crazy yeah he i had a I, wedding i was telling <laughs> did he yeah i was telling um the the mat factory guys like i'm like I don't want to do this again. <laughs> like you guys need to be represented to fight, on every bro. single yeah. card. Like I think that was probably the first card that we didn't have a factory guy on. I think the very first card. Yeah. It's no fat mad factory. I mean, no mad factory. factory. Yeah. The fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about the, fat well, yeah, we were talking about that before. <laughs> we do need to talk about the fat Van factory. Palms 240 over there. <laughs> Dude, we should call it the Fat Mactory Challenge or something. We gotta, we gotta go with that now. The fat Mactory. <laughs> we gotta go with that now. Two four seven. T-shirt. Fat Mactory. <laughs> My point before all the ridiculousness was the level of talent and uh, expertise in the local coaches it's is pretty, pretty staggering. It, it's pretty sexy. No, You're like, right. It's so sexy. It's just cool, man, to have those guys at our fights and like bringing their fighters in and being a part of this thing that we're trying to grow. Like, I feel like we're, we're in the best hands. Like it's up to us to not mess this up. Everything's right here for us. And it feels good. Except the yeah. opponents. Right. Except the opponents. Yeah. The opponents are not here. Like some <laughs> cities, like you have both sides. True. Like that's what happens. You just keep, getting those guys and like not here not here well every but once in a while high. we have a pittsburgh versus pittsburgh it just makes it more exciting i don't like it because it makes matching a lot yeah, harder. Life right. harder. yeah for sure. well i don't like it because it's a lot more expensive <laughs> right but it's our I like reality it. yeah because you're like oh. i like it because i don't care no Here's the did thing. i say that on camera Cut that out, Danny. Cut Hunt, that out, bro. Hunter's wife's out. in the studio. She is. And, like, I just looked over at him when he said he doesn't care. And we just, like, She's we, like, we collectively shake our heads at, like, this is the Hunter of our this lives. This is the Hunter mm -hmm. experience for you guys, yeah. Yeah. Hunter Who? Punter. Hunter Punter. <laughs> Daniel <laughs> Manuel. Ryan Brian. Ryan Brian. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Timmy. Timmy. <laughs> Jimmy Timmy. <laughs> I like Jimmy Timmy. Uh, I want... I'm trying to think of what we haven't talked. I know there are a couple of fights we haven't talked about while we're on. Well, let me, let me just uh, yeah, ahead, say this while I still can recall this. There were two specific moments throughout the night that I thought were crazy. Like I loved them. And um, both of them were, you know, the amateur fights. One, we already mentioned it, Ryan, you talked about the monkey roll. And I, mm -hmm. I remember, um, Siebert, like, Savitt had his back, and Siebert just kind of casually walking and coming towards towards me, and then all of a sudden he does this <laughs> roll. Like, you don't I expect saw, it. it. I, like, literally, I saw it happening as, like, a wrestling dad who's been at way too many hours of tournaments and things like that. Like, I, I knew that was happening before it happened. Like, he... He's a wrestler. He's been a monkey roll right That's here. That's awesome. But it, it was so calm. Like, it just... It's like, he's done it a million times. Hey, guys, times. watch this. Shit, like, yeah. the funnest... Like, he's like... This you guys are going to cool. like this. Yeah, this it's exactly cool. what yeah. his demeanor was like. Hold yeah. my beer. <laughs> and then the other moment um, was with, uh, with Clayton and Dan Walters. And Clayton takes Dan down and then... Like there's a like a quick scramble and Dan reverses. Oh, that oh was yeah, that. that's the sexy sweeper. Yeah, that was there's that <laughs> word you said. That was what you were saying. That's what I'm talking second. about. It was beautiful. It was it was awesome. So it's beautiful. Why do you like objectify? Everything? I love that fight so much. <laughs> yeah, and then and we had a bunch of slams too. 
Yes. Ken like crowd Kenneth pleasers. Burrs. I'm now calling him Kenneth. It's cold in here. Don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put the snowflakes. That the yeah, snowflakes. that was nice. That that was shout out Dylan Cole for that edit. That was really good. Oh, Dylan did it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that nice. That was nice. Ken Burrs kind of flew under the radar to a degree because he signed on so late. He was like a last minute addition to the card. Jason Molnix's original opponent dropped out. Jason weighed. 178 i think he was small for 185 and we told it like he knew what he was getting himself into with ken burr's collegiate wrestler training at india we know that's going to be a problem jason never batted an eye at Mm -mm. all he's Mm -mm. like i'm still in yeah like i'm still in i still want to fight this guy and after the fight (laughs) still very thankful grateful jason was awesome jason and his team man i liked that whole crew a whole lot and i told them repeatedly like our cage is open to you, man. I, I know he wants to fight at 170 next, which I also think is a good idea for him. Only from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. is the cage open to him. Okay. <laughs> we'll nice. make a note of that. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely post that. But um, yeah, Jason looked good. I mean, obviously, he got he got out-wrestled in that fight. We'll call it what it is. He got badly out-wrestled. Ken Burrs with some huge slams in that one. And... His his wrestling training with Danilo and those guys that's a deadly combo. We said it a million times. Those Indio wrestlers, Ken Burrs is is the next one. And at 185, if he does want to work down to 170, he's he's a smaller frame. He's probably only five seven, I would guess. I'm just guessing. I don't remember how tall he is, but just being around him, he's five seven, five eight ish. If he could get to 170, especially, that's he'd be a big yeah, time problem. I I think that you know at the amateur. You know, the novice amateur level, I don't think you really need to no worry need so to, much yeah. about that. And then, you you know, you work toward that. Dude, how about Vasoki Schwager? That <laughs> didn't happen. Dude, didn't happen. that's the... That's, you gotta remind me. Man, like, we have to make that fight happen. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I, we saw Josh there. I don't know if you guys saw Josh. I too, saw but, Josh okay, a couple cool. times, yeah. Yeah, he was in good spirits. He was bummed out that he wasn't fighting, but definitely, you know, we... Don't discuss people's personal injuries and things like that, but very valid reason for him not to be fighting. So it was good to see him there and in good spirits and everything like that. And Ben as well. Schweiger was there yeah, too. I didn't. I, I didn't meet Ben. I, I need to okay. meet him. I didn't. He's a great dude. A Definitely enjoyed talking to him, seeing him. I was glad he still came out, and supported the cause. So yeah, that's a fight we would love to put together in the future for sure. And I think like the feedback I heard, and granted, like we're in a bubble, like you know people you know, are nice to us on fight nights particularly. Yeah. But but the feedback that I heard was like, wow, like this is this is aw-. like Tanner Cahill mm-hmm. stopped me and we were nice. talking for a little while. And he's like, dude, you guys are like, wow. It's cool to hear, man. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think so. The weird thing is like Tanner said, like, you guys have really stepped up your game. And I, I mean, I dressed a little nicer. But other than that, I think we've been doing all the like. Okay, we have 247 Live now. We have this podcast, like, things like that. But, like, as far as, like, fight night, I don't know that we... Have we done a ton? Like, more? The new camera. Well, the the camera, new camera's for sure. pretty sweet. That's that's the I mean, first time that we, they were at the, the casino, that he was at the casino. So true. that atmosphere is that, tremendous. Oh, it is. It, I, I mean, I remember the first time I went there. Was I with you? Yeah, we were... And we, mm-hmm. there was, the tent wasn't even up. Right. I think right. we just had like the, the racks. Like he was the, like telling us, imagine it. Yeah. <laughs> and, Visualize and, it. And, and I'm like, okay, we're at a casino. Like we'll make it work. I kn- like, and it's a tent. Like it's not like this ballroom. That's like super nice or fan. Not ball. But, I know what you mean. You yeah. know, like yeah. there's, there's like, like the rivers room, the room at the river. Exactly. It's not that. Yeah. So, so. But I'm telling you what, there is z- like no atmosphere I've ever been in for anything like that atmosphere at the Meadows. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was freaking amazing. And I think because it's small and maybe it has to do with it being a tent too. Like the energy, like it, it's just on a different level. It is. And I'm glad you mentioned Tanner saying that. That's really cool coming from him. Guys that, you know, have been with gavin at lfa they've seen behind the scenes of an lfa fight as well they know how lfa runs things so for them and then also josh roller was incredibly complimentary after the fight he's like i loved working with you guys he's like some of the promotions i've fought for like you guys are 
light years ahead of them. Like what, keep doing what you guys are doing. So coming from a seasoned pro like that, that's been around, man, that means a whole lot to us for sure. And, and we don't love like all every aspect of like, there are some cards that we're dealt with the meadows that we would love to change. Then we can't Mm -hmm. like, Cards that are dealt. I see. Yeah, did I didn't do that on purpose. That was an <laughs> well, it would have been clever. Point. I knew you didn't do it on purpose, dude. That's so mean. <laughs> like he just is abusive to me. <laughs> and now I know how you feel. Does he abuse you like this? Oh, unbelievable. But um, the the really uh, what was I? Oh, like the locker room situation. Oh yeah. I I would love for it. Like we've done everything we can to make that a better situation. So at the Meadows Casino, um, we have to have the guys in like makeshift locker rooms out in the parking lot be- and because that's what the com- commission won't allow us to do anything else. We The first time we were at the show, we literally worked out to have this space inside the casino. It was like a four and a half minute walk from... Like we would have to walk fighters and we were going to organize all that so that guys had a nice place to like wait for their fights and get warmed up and all that stuff. And that got nixed. And like, that's the last thing we want to hear. So like we were very fortunate. There was a really nice day yesterday where it wasn't too cold. Yeah. I mean, it was cold, but I'm sure. It got cold by by the after intermission. Like it was getting chilly out there for sure. So we're guys warming up like in, sweats yeah yeah and staying close to the heaters that they provided so mcsorley i don't know if michael mcsorley is watching this podcast but we'll call him to let him know for sure have a plan for that man because even though it was 70 during the day like we got a very lucky nice day it still still got cold so yeah it was i mean in 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 the shade underneath there it was cold it was super cold like it was nice in the sun but like Tell yep. guys to have sweats, bring extra heaters. If you can enclose the area, if you can like rent a little tent or something, that would be ideal. But then you probably don't want to run a propane heater inside a tent. Yeah, I don't. Your guys might die. That's mm. probably not what you want. No, I don't think they'll die. Would it put off carbon monoxide? No. I'm not a scientist, guys. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want him to keep talking about his scientific yeah, let's, knowledge. Let's, let's yeah, keep going with this. Dude, I think if you run a propane heater in a closed environment, it will kill you. Automatic, like, like the second it starts. No, no, it's it funny take that a while. he's talking now about gas in an enclosed area because I thought I heard some <laughs> gas earlier nice. in an enclosed nice. area. Nice. <laughs> Did he that was he was over per- there making uh, making little, little toots, poops, little toots, yeah, making little <laughs> poops? That, that was such a perfect transition. That was a that was a sexier sweep transition what? than Dan Walters, bro. Po- a little poof poof. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's that's phenomenal. Hey, I got no counter to that. You're exactly right. That was perfectly played. Any anything else that stands out, guys? We, we I mean, like the other thing that stands out to me is, I mean, we kind of touched on this, but you know, Indio had three fighters on the card. It was a big card for them. Like they showed up, man. Oh, yeah. Those guys oh, yeah. showed up. Three and L. Three yeah, and a half. yeah. The, had a great night. Um, all, everyone looked good too. It wasn't like there were like ones that they were fortunate to get a win out of. Something like they, they just they they all showed up. They all looked good. Yeah. On that note, I I had the honor, and I call it an honor for real. Like I was standing beside Danilo for the main event, and we were just he was just talking about the fight. Like being able to hear somebody like that, and he was like live commentating, sharing his like. That was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. It was like being in the film room with Mike Tomlin or something, you know? Yeah. Somebody of that level breaking it down in real time. That it's no surprise those Indio guys are as good as they are when you look at who's leading them. Yeah, Indio's are Danilo's a great guy, and like, you know, it, it's a, it's it's a it's a touch of, you know, the Pittsburgh MMA scene and the gyms. That's it's all the like this you know, network of guys that have been doing it all. And then he, he's like the, I mean, he's the outsider. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's a neat like thing. Like we have this guy here in Pittsburgh now that is just so talented and such a jujitsu like legend um, that it it's a whole different dynamic. There's, a, I, I think there's competition, 
different with Indio and the gyms in Pittsburgh than anyone else, like mm-hmm. amongst themselves. I, seems I just like think it. There's... Yeah, it seems like it. What? Uh... It seems like it. One thing I wanted to mention, and, and we talked about it a little bit before, um, not really specifically to this point, but um, having two specific gyms and schools not um, having any fighters on the card is a testament to where we are now, where 247 is, and and how the uh, MMA community is building, and it's strong in Western Pennsylvania. We didn't yeah. have the Mad Factory, um, and we didn't have Gorilla House. And mm-hmm. those two two places have been staples for us, really, from the start. And 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 we we, we want that to continue. You, like, right. Uh, there's no zero parts of us that don't want like we want them to be a part of every card. Just to be clear. Yeah, but yeah. both big rosters, rosters filled with talent and. And look at what we had last night. Talent. Yeah. Exciting I mean, fights. If this is three years ago and we don't have Matt Factory and we don't have Gorilla House. You don't have a card. We don't have a show. Yeah. Like, period. And now we're, we are we can still have great shows when that doesn't line up with their schedule or yep. the matching or whatever. While losing two fights on short notice as well. Like, even being handicapped going in. Yeah, so and well, speak, and still, I mean, Monty Barnes went through more opponents. Three, than... I, w- I even forgot about that one. I was thinking Visoki and Pereira, but yeah, Monty, we lost three uh, within well, we, a week we, I mean, of yeah. the show. <laughs> yeah, dang, mm. good for us, good job. I Jim. mean, so <laughs> <laughs> as like, I just think of like, what would that card have been like with this? Like, Ugh. it was awesome. I know with Visoki and Schweiger, like. I just like from an ex like fight I was looking forward to. I mean, that was up there. That was up there. Yeah. I think Schwager's only loss was Jeff Magan, right? Mangin, Mangin, Mangin. Wait, who Jeff said that? Mangin, me. Oh yeah, it was you. Jeff Magan. Yeah. Mangin, yeah. Mangin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that I think that was Schwager's only loss. So I mean, you look at his two and one record, and you might think, oh, he's just two and one, but it's like he lost to a savage middleweight. Stud wrestler. See, I, I'm not like the the record. Like, uh, I'm not either. I've gotten. Uh, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. On I, this side, you get over it. When, on this side, it's it, like your record does. Like, let me watch him, mm-hmm, and I'll exactly. tell you how good he is or not. Yep. Like, you could be zero and three, and I Aaron could watch Harper, you Craig and Perry. say, yeah. like, that, <laughs> that kid's got a lot of He's talent. Good. Yep. Exactly. Look at our uh, featherweight champ. How he started Pro? out. Yeah. Started yep. out his pro career, he was he he started he's, it out coming off of losses. Bum. He is a bum, yeah. He's a total bum. Actually, yeah, the record doesn't lie on that one. He was terrible until he wasn't. Uh, well, I mean, him. once we made him, <laughs> then he became okay. We're the only reason why he is. I'm pretty sure where he is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's his name? I, uh, Veen, Wol- Wolverine. Mm. That sounds right. I don't know, something but I think Tom Kaiser Pork stole chop. that nickname. Yeah, now it's yeah. Tom Wolverine Kaiser. Tom Wolverine. We've forgotten about <laughs> who the, over that what whatever his name is. Evan was. something. Evan Ghost. Oh, that's it. his name. Evan it Ghost. was Evan Ghost. <laughs> that's the op- <laughs> that's the opponents we try to find for Sid. <laughs> Evan, Evan Ghost. Ghost. Evan Ghost. Yeah. Nice. We 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 try to match Sid like pretty much every card. And that's true. And um, <laughs> she fights one every six cards. Yeah. So that tells you what. Yeah. I mean, the pool is very small and the the people that say yes is even smaller. Like some people won't even like they act like they never saw the message. Like they'll, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. I, it's a good time. Yeah. And by good time, I mean incredibly frustrating. I, I feel like. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. I just have one last thing and then mm-hmm. I'm not going to speak. The rest of the podcast. <laughs> Hello, people. <laughs> um, so we we mentioned it briefly, um, and that is the Fat Mactory. Oh yeah, geez. So what we're uh, what we Hunter has proposed, and I'm on board with this. This is sexy. Yes, this mm, is the, like this is be. yeah. You can use we're that all word gonna for be this. Sexy. Right. Oh, dude, exactly. There you go. Sexy. Yeah. So we've had issues, and every promotion runs into it, um, where you have fighters coming in, 
not making weight, not not doing what they had. Oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. What was that? <laughs> he had a fur ball. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was trying to be nice about the fighters <laughs> missing weight, and I couldn't get it out. <laughs> He's like, I have to be mean. <laughs> yeah, so my awesome. body would not react yeah, well yeah. to me being nice about <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was catapulting that niceness out. So, yeah, so we've had like glaring weight misses over the past three cards, including last night. And, um, and so much so to the point that it was specifically addressed to both sides. Don't show up overweight. If you've got issues, if, if it's going to be difficult or you can't get to what you agreed upon, let us know in advance. We gave them several days notice and trying to help these guys continue to be professionals. That's how the commission looks at them. doesn't matter if they're pro 20 fights into their career, amateurs ready to go pro. The commission says, if you agreed at 145 or one one seventy, show up and, and make that weight. And so, well, and Chael Sonnen <clears throat> has like, said you've agreed to something you like to not do that is very unprofessional exactly and and so i've come remember you remember what you said like i wish we could replay that clip when when we talk uh, about yes yes like before you cursed it i did yeah before we even got down the road of Pereira and ortega we were talking about that fight on the podcast, and I said, 125 bouts make me nervous. For making weight. Yeah. For making weight. I like. I feel like that it's so small. It's really hard to get down there. Like, human males aren't supposed to weigh 125. Like, <laughs> like just like, even the smallest of males, like, your bodies are just bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I've, I've always got nervous when we had 125 pounds about which we haven't had a ton of but when right. we do i'm always nervous yeah. well we have more of them now well, yeah i mean they are popping up well but those same ones are hard to match because there's not a lot all over also true yeah so um yeah i literally said this makes me nervous and then yeah. and then there's a and then it happened you spoke it right into existence there are five he was five pounds over mm -hmm. so yeah about that, what are we doing about that, Jim? What are we going to do, James? Jimmy Timmy. Jimmy Timmy. Well, so our next card is December 17th. Where Where's that card at? It is at the Monroeville Convention Center. And if someone Convention wanted to Convention and go, Event Center, it's rebranded. If well, That's been like that. Um, they just haven't rebranded well. <laughs> uh, have you, uh, if someone wanted to get, like, go to that, how would they go about that? They would take... It depends on where they're coming in from. And not, not not directions. How would they know, get tickets? It's on the way to IUP. <laughs> it's on the way to IUP. <laughs> is it? Well, I guess. Sorry, it's it a, a story it a from last night. I don't know yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> we will hilarious. have tickets available soon online at 247fighting.com. Um, expect a great card. Jim's like going to bury down the hatchet immediately and start putting fights on this card. I think we already have some things in the works. There's a few. I don't know that there are necessarily signed yet, but we're, 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 we're at a point where we think they'll, they'll maybe more than likely than not happen. Yep. Um, and we're going to put together an awesome card as our year end card. This is the card that when, when you, uh, when you say like, Oh, I don't. I don't know what to get my husband for Christmas. Like, this is the best early Christmas present you could have. You're gonna have a good time. That's what I tell everybody. Like, even if you think you're not interested in fights, I guarantee you, you're gonna have a good time at the show. Nobody leaves our shows like, I can't believe I just spent money on that. Well, and nobody. That's, that's literally li nobody. That's literally what I always say to like people is like, the only people that have ever said like, oh, like. $50? Like, are people that don't go. Exactly. There, I've never heard someone say, oh, I don't, I, I don't feel like I got my money's worth. No, <laughs> right. you get your you money's get worth at a 247 exactly. show. We have the best gyms 
the best fighters, best we bring in the best matchups. It and we 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 have a show. It's not just a gymnasium where you're throwing a cage in and having fights. Like we have the lights, camera, action. It's it's a show. On that note, nice. Jason Molnix's team, I wanted to shout them out as well because they they said exactly that after the fight. They were like, what you guys are doing with the production? He's like, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. Like, I, I had no idea coming in. Wasn't super familiar with your promotion. You know, they're not quite in Pittsburgh out in Connellsville. He was like, I felt like I was at a mini UFC show. He's like, you guys are doing the production up, like, perfect. He's like, we are blown away by what you're doing. So, shout out. Thank you. Yeah, we love. We I like love a nice that. compliment. Not gonna lie, we, it feels we, good. It does because we work hard as hell on it. Exactly. <laughs> There's so many hoops we jump through. There's so many like check marks that we have to get to get everything the way we want it to be. Everything like looking the way we want it to. And these guys will be the first to tell you how annoying. I am yes, on, yes, yes. on Keep fight going. day Keep going. about the way everything looks and mm-hmm. having it look perfect. And w- it's never going to be perfect, but that doesn't mean we're not going to keep trying to make it that right. way. Right. Hunter, is is he annoying on uh, oh. at weigh-ins? He, he said only on but fight day. But is he day. annoying at weigh-ins? Well, he was before. He used to be. Yeah, he yeah. used to be. For some reason, these he last He doesn't show up shows. anymore. <laughs> huh. Interesting. He's, he's a lot yeah. less annoying at the last two weigh-ins. Is, for sure. is he at the Fat Mactory? Is that why he's not there? <laughs> I'm gonna be at Given to Fly here soon. Uh, because well, you better get it in because today's the last there day. There you go. We kept like bringing it up, but never actually said yeah, what's going to happen. Jim, take maybe it away. we can do well, something like a little more the, with this. The Fat Mactory challenge. Yeah, we never seriously. actually explained what's happening, did we? We could tie this no, in so to like what we're gonna do is uh, like. Try to lose weight for December 17th, and I'm going to lose the most because these two are chumps. I have the most to lose, and I'm also the youngest, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose the most. Just saying. I have a natural advantage by being bigger. Wait, so how old are you? 31. 31. He's so young. Mm -hmm. What are you, like 6, 70? 73. Yeah, 73. Minus 18. You wear it well. You wear 73 really well. That was quick math. That was really good math yeah. if that was accurate. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You just threw that 18 out there like that. That yeah. was nice. Yeah. So you're 55 for real? That is correct. I was wondering. I was, yeah. Okay. Yep. Now so we know. Good so looking, old. intelligent. So we have like a most perfect Dirk Winston. No, you need 55? to be a couple years older, yeah. bro. Yeah, true. I need to be thirty-five. Danny Palms in there too. He's at He's twenty-five. 25. Whoa! You're the you're the oddball. Right, repl- Imagine that. Hunter's the oddball <laughs> for the first time in my life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, to to actually round up what this Fat Mactory challenge is, I love how we just named that. It is right? now. It's That's what definitely it is. what it is. Live on the air, we named it the <clears throat> Fat Mactory. We're fat. I've noticed that I've been gaining a lot of weight because I literally just eat what I want and drink what I want and sit around a lot. You aren't you aren't mentioning that you're really like good looking though. That balances it out. Okay. It really does. And like ninety percent of the weight is in my. You're booty. opening a can of worms there because he's used the word that I Sexy. thought we were. Yes, there you go. There we go. I thought that was banned. Me- he's he's Mexi. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's nice. Tex Mexi. Nice. That's true. Shout out La Casa Wait, del Wait, are you are you Hispanic? <laughs> yeah, clearly. Can That's you not right. see? Yeah. It? yeah. Well, what do they call you? The albino Jesus. Albino Jesus. <laughs> albino Undertaker. Yeah, I'm between yeah. those two. Those are two really as good As long nicknames. as it's albino, it pretty much describes I like that you. that's the con. It's two yeah. totally unrelated yeah. people, yeah. too, that made those comments. Like, Shock. Beautiful. Who who commented on the the albino Jesus thing? That what? was a Battleborn coach, Billy okay. Elliott. The man, he's a good dude. Nice. I'm here for that. I'm yeah. here for that. So we uh getting a little heavy over here, all of us. So I threw it out to them. I was like, hey, like we always talk about fighters missing weight. Like let's put our money where our mouths are and lose weight. Like let's make weight on December 17th or 16th, as it were, with them. Let's weigh in today, see where we're at, set a target goal for December 16th, and do I gotta it. eat given to fly first. We get this is our last That's okay. day. This is our last yeah. day of indulgence. Like, yeah, just, just miss weight. <laughs> just miss weight. 
So I expect mine. I, I honestly don't know if I can do my like realistically, but I'm gonna I'm gonna see what happens because well, I think well, I weigh like two forty five right now and I two oh five like forty pounds in forty. How many days are we? Fifty days. That's, that's a that's a pound it's a day. Camp. It's a pound a day. It's pretty crazy. Dude, you can. It's pretty la- legit. The last the last five can be water. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll find a song. I don't know. Looking at him, I'd say he has, he doesn't have much water weight. That it's all, D- it's, dude, all it's all ass. fat. <laughs> it's all. It, ass. it came to him honestly. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's all man booty. There's a lot of booty here. There really is. I mean, you said that the other day, and I'm like, we don't have booties. Like that, I do. That, that's that's a what girl I'm saying. Thing. Bro, these homostack hips and booty. <sighs> these homostack <laughs> hips. <laughs> these childbearing hips. <laughs> they hit different, bro. <laughs> so we're going to officially weigh in, but I think I'm around 245. So I'm going to try to get to 205. Like I said, I don't even know if that's realistic, but we're going to do it. So yeah, I, that's, a, that's a real weight cut. Like, that's a lot of weight to lose. Yeah, but when you're fat. Like, I know, that's what easier. I'm saying. I have a lot to lose, so I think I might actually be able to do it. Not like I'm a ripped mm. 245 trying yeah, to get like, down to two. Where am I? Where yeah. am I losing? It's like ah, uh, yeah, we can see where this could come well, off. Here's the thing, like, <laughs> I don't want you to lose all your muscle, dude. That would be a shame, honestly. All right, all right. So like, <laughs> I'm gonna maybe talk to we Dalton should Rasta. maybe we should do like 215. Where's wh- where's he getting it from though? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I was gonna look under the table and make sure he didn't lose it. How about wow, nice. How about I let you guys know on December 16th at 2 p.m. if I'm not close to 205 or not? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, this, uh, December 16th weigh-in day, yeah, 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 yeah. At 2 p.m. And then, and then I'll say, like, I told you in advance. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you can't, you got to be less than six pounds over at <laughs> yeah, that point. Yeah, that's true. If, if, you, you know, if you want to save face, yep. that's what you got to do. I think I can do work there. Where are you guys at? Like, what's what do you think is going to be no your target I, weight? I have no idea what I weigh right now. Well, I'm do we probably wanna... I'm probably close to you. Plus two sixty five. Super heavy. Yeah, Luke Payson said that he <laughs> he thought I was close to three. Close to three. I mean, I'm making that up, but obviously he said two ninety one. Two ninety. Yeah, two ninety seven. I think. Nice. Wow, he cricketed us again. I know. He loves, like, he, I think he has, like, I'm going to cricket them. And he just, like, he, like, okay, there's a space to do it. I did it. <laughs> I think Danny Palm, he said, Manny. Danny Manny Palm said he weighed 198, but will not be taking part in the challenge. So he's going to have, like, given to fly around. I, he's going to be rubbing it in. I can no, already he's see not. it. No, he's not. He it. can't. I can already envision it. I think you should join us, Danny. We're going to get the people to uproar and get you down to 185. That's thir- 13 pounds. Yeah, they're going to be like as good as gyms. Hello, people. 13 pounds in like 50 days, dude. You can 100% do that. All right, all right. I'll 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 get down to 185. Yeah. And then you get to fight James Leto. Nice. No, no. And then, <laughs> he, and then, he, gets, and then he gets to fight Derek Brown. That's nice, too. Let's do that. Danny, Danny, and the Derek Brown challenge. I like it. I like it. Jim, are you uh, middleweight as well? I'm just trying to guess what you're going to try to get. Yeah, to. I'm. I'm headed to 185. There I'm probably mid um, 220s right now. Ooh, me and you have a nice Ooh. cut. Yeah. I. I mean, if I weigh what you, what, I'll, I'll do the same weight as you. Okay. Like the same difference. Okay. Cool. So if if I'm like, I don't know what I weigh. I honestly don't. I, I've tried to stay away from the, when I was if down I were to below guess, 200. You were weighing yourself constantly. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, like, yeah, oh, what's I'm up? the best ever. Yeah. And then I started eating again. Yeah. And I'm going to throw this out there on the air. I haven't discussed it with them at all, but Eddie Rovnak and that immortal diet optimization. If you guys want cheating, in, absolutely. If you guys want to help us, I am 100% down to promote your plant like we'll make it very known that i'm following the immortal way yeah if we do it the if you immortal could, dude, way if, if you guys could get me down to 205 looking good that would be the best testimonial well the looking good just threw a wrench into this whole thing but like i'll put a bag over my head when you mean I weigh weight in. looking good yes okay. my weight looking mm. good what about what are you gonna do with all the muscle dude that's for eddie to figure out 
I love how we are just relentlessly like just bash each other. It's pretty I mean, awesome. I don't, I don't know. That. So speaking of bashing, um, like you are like you said, mid two forty somewhere around there. I think so. So you're gonna lose like forty. Um, yeah. So we're all all kind of in the same weight range, and you're not sure. I where don't you're know. At. I, I so, think I'm probably around where Hunter's at. Yeah. Like we've known each other a long time, and I'm just gonna be honest here. I. I don't recall seeing you this big before that I think that you're... No, I was bigger before. 100%. Yeah, pull up the photos. I think that photo is still on the site of yeah, you I before was you lost weight. I bigger before. 100%. Yeah, see, I, I would put you like mid-240s. Yeah, I was up to 290. Really? Mm-hmm. I used to weigh 285. Whoa. Danny, Danny, wow. So there's the winner right there. He's a, like that he meant like this morning. Now he's already he's already lost. He's cut <laughs> weight. 85 he's down. So if you get to 185 <clears throat> Danny, that would be a perfect 100 pound weight loss from your heaviest. Yeah, he he looks better now for sure. This is the old yeah. picture of Ryan that's still on the site. You weighed more huh. here than you do now. For and sure. I wasn't saying that like in a derogatory way. There are other no, ways you that I can. Were. No, I, I could. <laughs> no, there... no, you were. Well, no, Jim, I. I what I said bro. was I wasn't trying. I, yes, I mean, so I can be derogatory. <laughs> You're allowed. Okay. Okay. So that's the Fat Mactory Challenge, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna lose weight is what is all we're getting at, and we're gonna weigh in. Fat Mactory. We might have to rename it if a more. We, we might have to. Well, if they want to put their name, if they want to, if they want to help, for sure, that would be sick. Yeah. If not, I'm gonna just drink a ton of water, stop drinking alcohol, and keto. That's my plan and workout. Run the, the Fat Mactory Challenge, sponsored yeah. by Immortal Diet Optimization or the Rehab Center. Or the Matt Factory, the Fat Mactory Challenge, sponsored by the Matt Factory. Change your Fat Mactory into a Matt Factory. <laughs> That's it. That's the transformation. All mm-hmm. right. All right, guys. It's been a pleasure. Brawl in the Berg 14 was a great success. If you want to, uh, didn't get a chance to watch it, it's available at stream247live.com, which is um, going to be a Roku app, an Apple TV app, an iOS app very, very soon, maybe even as soon as this week, um, which is what we're hoping for. Um, but that's where all of our content will be. Um, we also, it's a, it's a subscription service, so you can subscribe for a year. You can buy it for a gift. It makes a great Christmas present. You get all, when you buy that yearly, you have all access to all of our pay-per-views, all of our content. Yep. And we also have some other um, promotions, like some boxing and some other promotions available on there as well as a pay-per-view. Separate, that would not be, like none of the, only our content is included in the subscription. So when we have other pay-per-views on there, that'll just be one-off pay-per-views. Yep. It's a good time. Thank you for mentioning that because the replay is indeed live right now. So if you missed it, you can watch it right this second. Every fight we just talked about, go see for yourself. Go watch Lucas Siebert's Monkey Roll. And you can you can get that subscription, and you can watch all of our content, all of our past content, all of our future content for one year. Boom. That's a good old time. And then Brawl in the Berg, 15, December 17th. That's going to be a banger. Like you said, there's a couple fights already in the works that you guys are going to be very excited about. We're going to fill out the rest of the card starting probably today. Mm-hmm. Reaching out. It's it's matching time for that one. Yeah, so when we're Full at that like, eight-week mark, that's like full swing matching. Like yep. That's when the bouts have to start coming together, and now's that time. I think, is this the eight-week mark? I haven't I, counted it them. Probably. It's either eight or nine. It's close, yeah. So we're right there, and uh, we're fat, and we're going to lose weight. So that's the other thing to keep track of. We're going to talk about it on the podcast. I'll probably blog about it. We'll you know, give you guys updates and even share some uh, progress, meal plans, things like that, things that we're doing. I think it's cool, man. I'm a big fan of, you know, put your money where your mouth is. It's easy for us to, to be upset when fighters miss weight, but I'm not naive, and I understand that that's hard, too. Making weight is tough. We are 
eight weeks. There you go. We're at the eight week mark. So we have eight weeks to lose like roughly 40 pounds a piece. It's doable. Totally doable. Eight, 40. It's five pounds a week. It's good. That's a good clip for sure. Yeah. It's doable though. Especially when you're as when you're good fat. looking as us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Good looking, good looking. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. First time she's laughed the whole time we've been here. Oh, yeah, we, we call ourselves good yeah, looking, yeah, yeah. and she's, she's like, ah, hysterically. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm surprised. Jo- joke's on her. She married one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bah, 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 bah. Lead us out, Danny Palm. Thank you for joining us. See us soon here at stream247live.com. Yeah.